Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyim Yavid Dezorah Daf Ayin. We begin three lines off the top of the Ahmed with a story. Hahu Beisah, there was this home, the Hava Yosef Bey, Chamra de Yisrael, in which was stored Chamra wine, of a yid, kosher wine. Suddenly, Al Oivit Kechavim, a guy walks in, Achta Ladasha closes the door, Pei in front of him, so walks in, closes the door behind him, and we don't know what he's doing. But luckily, there was a crack in the door through which you can you can you know you can see into the house, a little crack or a, you know people. But a bizza, there was this crack, but dash in the door. He comes running in, and lo and behold, the guy was found between the barrels. The guy he was standing, Baini Dani, between the barrels of kosher wine. What's the status of that wine? Shall we be concerned? That the um, the guy touched those uh, touched the uh, the wine or not? Okay, so the wine was sitting in those barrels and those uh, containers. Apparently, they were uh, they were not sealed. Did he touch the wine or not? Amarava called the lahadi biz ashari. Any uh, wine which was positioned opposite. You know, in front of the, the crack of the door. So it would be noticed from the outside. Sorry, that wine is okay. Because the guy would not dare touch that wine. Lest he be picked up by the yid. Looking through the door. But the wine on the sides. Off to the sides. The haggis off to this side. The haggis the haggis off to that side. Also because he may have tampered with that wine. And Rashi, by the way, says that. We're going to have many stories coming up at today's daf with, with a guy, you know, being found in close proximity to wine, etc. And the, the Gemara will say in some cases it's, it's mutter because there was some sort of, you know, deterrent factor at play which would dissuade the guy from touching. And in some cases it's asr. Rashi says the word asr means all the way af bahano. It's considered like, like, like gaisha wine, asr bahano. He may have touched, he may have, you know, wiggled the wine and be manasik. When we say mutter, it means you could even drink it. It's safe, even for drinking. Okay, next story of wine, which had been in a home. Now, this home was actually jointly owned by a guy who lived on the main floor and a yid who lived on the top floor, from which he can see down to the main floor somehow. Okay, there was this wine, the Israel of a Jewish wine. David Yasser Bevesa was situated in a home. David Dyer Yisrael in which there was a, a Yiddish resident on the upper floor, a guy on the bottom floor. Shaman called Tigra. Suddenly they hear this uh, this fight outside. They both go running out to take a look. Nafki, they both uh, go out. And uh, who came back in first? The guy. The guy came in first, not realizing whether, in fact, the Yid had already returned or not. He walks in, he closes the door. Question is, what's the status of the wine? And the wine actually, says Rashi, was sitting on the bottom floor. It was not under supervision, technically. But the guy may not have known about you know, the whereabouts of the Israel. So Rabbi says like this, The wine is safe. Sure, it's okay. Because the guy is thinking, I know, just like I came back in, Kadim Vasi Yisro, the Yid came before me. He's already sitting upstairs, and he sees exactly what I'm doing. He wouldn't touch the wine. How was Shpiza? There was a story about this uh, hotel, So again, we have Jewish wine in there. We find the guy in between the barrels. What's the status of the barrels? If he, he, he he wouldn't have any justification for touching the wine. If he was caught, he would be incriminated, like a ganav. Then he certainly wouldn't do it. Sorry, the wine is okay. He wouldn't dare touch. We lie, but otherwise, if he has any sort of alibi for touching the wine, then the, uh, the wine is usur. So, uh, if uh, he's concerned about being caught, you know, the... Uh, 
there's an active police uh, force with a good court system, so then he wouldn't touch it. Otherwise, you never know. Hobe, so once again, a story of a, of a room, Dava Yosu Bechamra, where there was a kosher one, Ishtakach Oyv Gechavim, Dava Koyim Beidani, and we find the guy between the barrels, I'm a Rava, same story. Isle Ishtamute, if he has some sort of uh, excuse why he's there, Chamra Asr, then the, um, the wine is Asr. Because we assume, what's he doing in the room with the wine? Apparently, he intended on doing Nisuch. Okay, and he figures, I'll get caught, I'll explain myself, I'll excuse myself for being here. We lie, but if he has no reason to be there, Chamra Shari, the wine is deemed safe because he wouldn't dare, you know, uh, go in and, and, and touch the wine. There's no business being there, and then he's apprehensive about even being there to begin with. Certainly, he wouldn't uh, feel free to touch the wine. Maybe here comes a cash. The Bryce says, nin, nin al hapundik. So again, we have this uh, road stop, this, uh, this motel, and there's wine in there, and the, uh, the door shut, and there's a guy with the wine. So the guy is inside the uh, closed room with the wine. Or, suppose that the Israel asked the guy, you know, do me a favor, look after my wine. He'll come stand outside and uh, guard the, the room to ensure nobody enters. Asr, in both cases, the wine is Asr. We're concerned that the guy may have entered and uh, played with the wine. My love, let's assume. I forgot the last lady, even though we presume the guy has no excuse for being inside. Apparently, even then, there's a concern of tampering. Loy, this Lishtamuti was speaking that the guy has some sort of, you know, alibi, some sort of cover story, which would justify him being in the room, but otherwise it's safe as per Rava's decision. Another story, Awi Yisrael, Bebet Kechav, there was Yidin Agoy, Dabu Yassi Vivika Shosuchamra, sitting and drinking some wine. Shama Yisrael Katsluye, so the Yid was drinking his wine, the guy was drinking his wine, the Yid suddenly hears them calling, you know, for a minyan for Mincha. Bey Knishta in the shul. Come v'azal. So he hears them starting to down. He runs, gets up, and runs to catch the minyan. What's the status of the wine they left behind with the guy temporarily? A marav, a chamra shari, the wine is uh, permissible. Why? Neymar Amr, because the guy is thinking to himself. He's not going to last very long in the shul. As soon as he recalls his wine, he'll be back. He doesn't realize what, you know, tefillah is all about. A guy should cup. Neymar Amr, he's thinking to himself, Ashta Midkad. Certainly. Sooner or later, he's going to recall his uh, abandoned wine. Vodar is going to come running back. So his return is, is imminent. He's not going to touch his wine for concern of being caught. Another story, a similar story. Oh, Yisrael, with Kachama Yidin, the guy that was sitting on a, on a boat. And it was Erev Shabbos. Shama Yisrael, Kal Shippure. Yisrael suddenly hears them announcing, them blowing the shafer, the alarm, the Shabbos alarm. The Bei Shimshi of, uh, you know, Friday afternoon. It's Shabbos. Around the corner, right? So he quickly gets up and runs into town. Nafak Ba'azel. So he runs and he leaves the boat and runs into town. Hamarava Hamar Shari. Once again, the wine they left behind in the boat is still okay. It's still safe. Why? Because the guy's expecting him back. Meim Ahmed, the guy's thinking to himself, Hashta Mitkar Leila Hamri, certainly. Very soon, he'll recall that he left his wine behind. Vada Rasin will come back to retrieve it. And the fact that it's Shabbos, ah, the guy is not thinking. That will stop the Yid from coming back. Why? Hamar Rav, Rav already told us that Amarli, so Rav is relating that Isser, Giyura, Isser was a, a guy who became a Yid. His name was Isser, Giyura, a convert. So Rav says that Isser once told me an interesting anecdote. When I was still a guy, Amrinan, we would think, we would figure amongst ourselves, ah, those Jews, they don't really keep Shabbat, they're not really religious. Yudai, the Yidin, Leimintri Shabbat, they don't really keep to their rules, they don't keep to the laws of Shabbos. Otherwise, where are, where are all the wallets in the street? The abandoned wallets. The street should be full of wallets. From the, uh, you know, travelers who showed up last minute, they should just dump their wallets in the street. There are no wallets in the street. Ah, apparently they don't really <laughs> keep to their rules. The Yidintri Shabbat, because if they didn't really keep to the Shabbos, Kama kisi, kama shtachi b'shuka. Where are the, uh, why, why aren't we finding all the money pouches and abandoned money pouches from the last uh, minute arrivals, right, in the street? Lo'idano, the truth is that uh, I didn't realize, or v'inu lo'yodu, they don't realize, that 
technically they're right, but halachically they're wrong. Because the Chachamim provide a special dispensation, a special kula for those, those types of you know, predicaments of the travelers caught in the road with their money. The Sri Lanka Rabbitzah, we follow Rabbitzah, Shittam Ritzchak. There's a solution for that. Hamoyit say, Kis B'Shabbat, a person finds himself with his money pouch outside. Malichai Pochis, Pochis, Mdal Damas, you carry it, but in small increments of less than four Amas at a time, which is less than the, uh, the, the sheer, the distance that would trigger a, a malach of carrying on Shabbos. So there's a special heter in this type of case of potential you know, loss of, of money. You can carry it a bit at a time, and that's why you don't find money pouch in the street. But in any case, the guy in their minds think, ah, the Jews are just like that. <laughs> right? So Shabbos, Shabbos, he's going to come back for his wine, even though he's not really going to, but the guy's thinking that uh, his return is imminent and he won't dare touch his wine. Who are you? There's a story of a lion. Davanoi Matsarta suddenly roared in the wine press uh, facility. Okay, so standing in the facility, and they hear a lion coming. The guy hears the uh, loud roar. He scampers away and uh, takes cover between the uh, Tasha. He hides Benidani between the barrels of what? kosher wine. I'm a Rava. Says Rava, once again, Chamra Shari, the wine is okay. Because the guy is thinking to himself, just like I'm hiding here, the Jew must be right behind me and looking out. Keeping an eye on me. Just like I'm hiding here. The Jew is hiding behind me. He's keeping an eye on me. He wouldn't touch the wine. There was a story of these uh, robbers. Salki Pompadiso who came to Rav in Pompadisa, which was a city um, with a vast uh, majority of, 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 of Jewish residents, amongst them some robbers too. So they came into town, and they went from one barrel to the other, opening barrels. What's the status of the wine within? Oh, Rav, Rav says, I'm sorry, the wine is okay. My time, why? Ruba Ganvi. Most of the local robbers are Jews, Israel, and they're Jews, and therefore they don't invalidate the wine. Havod, there was a similar story, but Nardoi, the town of Nardoi, where the robbers opened some barrels, Vamra Shmuel, and once again Shmuel says the same thing, Chamra Shari, the wine is okay. Even though in this town it wasn't uh, mostly, you know, Jewish robbers, still it's okay. Why? Why is it okay? Maybe a guy touched it. Kaman Kar Belezer, Dama Safak Biatar, is he following Rebelezer's Shita, a unique Shita who says, that when the suffix pertains to the starting point of the uncertainty. For instance, you know, let's see the uh, the, the Bryce, the Snan, we have a Mishnah. So we all know that if one encounters a suffix tumor, not sure whether he touched something which is tummy. If it happened in a uh, secluded, you know, more private area, not a, a well traveled, you know, street, a private area. Even though he's in doubt, he's Tameh. That's the Allah. We learn from the Saita, who's considered Tameh because of her questionable experience in, in seclusion. So the Mishnah speaks about a similar case. This Nana Nechans Labika. One walks into a valley full of you know, fields, most like Shem in the wintertime when it's not uh, traveled. Nobody's walking through the, right? So it's a private, secluded area. With two of us other plains. And we know that uh, a certain field is full of tumma. He doesn't know if he entered the field or not. There are many fields, right? Va'amar, he says, Allah, you know, I went into the general vicinity. Veni yadeh, I'm not sure, even nechnas, like says, if I even entered that field and encountered the tumma. Imlavu, maybe, imlai nechnas, maybe I didn't enter the field. Rulezo, I'm a suffolk, be a toy. Rulezo says, despite this being a, a, a suffolk, an uncertainty with, with respect to Interaction with Tumah, in Rosh Hashayach, in this case he's tired because he's not even sure that he actually entered the, the Tumah domain. So it's, it's another step removed, so to speak. Rabbi Ezra is Suffolk Biaf, the Suffolk regarding the, the entry itself, he's tired. Suffolk Maga Tumah. If he knows he entered the area of the Tumah, just doesn't know if he touched the Tumah, then he's Tumah. But Suffolk Biaf is tired. Are we going to apply the same principle to Shmuel? The reason why he allowed the wine to be drunk by the Yid because Although we have robbers, but since we don't even know who entered the home, was it a Jewish robber? Was it a non-Jewish robber? So that's considered 
a Suffolk Bia, in which case uh, it's a very low level concern and uh, it would be tar. Well, says the no, you don't have to resort to that type of analysis. Like Shani Hassan. I'll tell you why Shmuel allowed the wine. Keep in the Ika the Paschal Shema because we have. Even if they're a Goyim, we have many Goyim who come in after wine. They come to find money in the barrels. The Pascha, they open the barrels, Shema Maina. With the hopes of finding some money. So now it adds another layer of uncertainty. Havali Sfix fake. it's a double suffix, a double uncertainty. Rashi explains, what's the double? Well, first, was he a Yid, was he a guy? And even if he was a guy, perhaps he wasn't even interested in the wine. He wasn't touching the wine, he was looking for money. As soon as he opened the barrel, he sees it's wine, he moves on. So it's a Sfex Sveka, and therefore it's Tar. Therefore it's Matar. I read you, so the story of a young Goyish girl. Dishtakach. Turns out, the Havas Beidani. She was between the barrels, open barrels, of kosher wine. The Havas Nakita. And it was stuck to her hand. Ufya, there was this, uh, these bubbles. Biyada on her hand. So she was holding these bubbles. Clearly, which had come from the wine. Amarava. Shari, the wine is okay for drinking. Why? Amar, we can say, She grabbed the bubbles from the back of the barrel when the bubbles spilled over. She didn't get to the inside. I've got the lekka so even though we don't find any, uh, we're not noticing any bubbles in the back of the barrels. Amar, we can still say, She chanced upon it. It so happened that it was available when she was there, even though now you don't find it. And therefore, we can. Be lenient and allow the barrels, allow the wine for drinking. Hope and Musa. It was another story, a similar story about a, a general with his troops. The Salak Nardo, they came to Nardo. Apostle Chavisa Tuva, they went from one barrel to the other, next, opening barrels and barrels. Kios Ravdimi Omar, Ravdimi comes, he says, Look, I'll tell you what to do. Right? The question was, What's the status of the, of the wine? So he says, Omar, he says, Uvda Hava Bey Kamei Drabalazar. There was a similar story in front of Rabalazar. So the question was presented to Rabalazar. Vishara, and he allowed the wine to be uh, drunk. Layadan, I'm not sure. Is it because he conforms with Rabalazar, who says, when the suffix is on the entry, the question pertains to the actual entry, such as in this case, we're not sure. Regarding the identity of the members of this troop, was it Goyim, was it Eden? Dhamma who says Suffolk, when the Suffolk pertains to Bia, regarding the entry to begin with, Tur is considered okay, likewise over here. That's one way. Or perhaps it's for a different reason that the wine was okay, because he figured most of the, the members, the Azli, most troops who followed this, uh, this band leader, Israel Ninu, were, uh, were, were hidden at that time, in that location. So we're not sure what, you know, what the reason would be. And therefore, the same, the same would apply to the uh, story at hand in, in Ardo. Certainly they're not uh, all or, or mostly hidden. There's uh, an element of uncertainty in terms of the identity, the religion of the, of the members of, the, of this troop. So, if the, uh, the reason to allow it is because of Suffolk Bia Tahar, the first approach, and that should apply in our case too, because there's a suffix as to who entered the home. Well, says the Gemara, actually not. They knew there was Goyim. There's no question as to whether there were Goyim. Yach, if that's the uh, equation. Hi, Suffolk Bia. Why are you considering it a Suffolk Bia? You're not sure who entered. You know who entered. There were Goyim. Suffolk Mago, at most. It's just a question of whether they touched or not. Well, says the Gemara, no. Kiva and Miftah since you, you see that they're doing something unusual. They opened a large amount of barrels, way more than would, would re- be required for their drinking needs. So clearly, there's another agenda as well. Ema, we can certainly speculate, Adata de Vamayna Paschal. They were looking for money. They opened the barrels with money in mind. Ukasavat be a dummy. So even if they were certainly Ganyim, It has the status of uh, like Suffolk Bia. Which means to say that we can we can apply a kula. We can allow ourselves to be lenient. 
and follow this indicator and say they probably did not touch the um, the wine. Aima Suvisa, there was this Jewish uh, woman, this wine seller, it's called Misavisa, based on the Pasuk, Zeilel Vesoyve, says Rashi, or Savech Mohal Bamayim. Okay, so that was her profession, she was a, a wine seller. The Moshul Eklida, Maftecha, Lebezkicham. So one day she decided to hand the key to her store to a guy, a Geisha woman. No, what's the status of the wine within the store? Amr, Rabbi Salman of Lazar, no problem. Uvda, Havabi Midrasha, a similar story was brought to the Chacham and Beis HaMedrash from the Amr, and they said it's okay, like Amashrullah, because when she handed her the key, she only gave her Ela Shmiris Maftech Bavad. The mission was, watch the key. It's not access to the store. She has no business being there, and therefore she wouldn't do it. Amr, Abai, Avanam, Tanina, we find the same in a, in a, um, in a uh, Mishnah. Hamoysim Maftech Lamoritz. So a fellow had a storeroom full of, you know, wheat or whatever, and he gave the keys to a yid who's not scrupulous in matters of, of tumma. Does that pose a concern regarding the status of the uh, material? No, Tarois of his uh, material, which was tar until then, Tarois is still uh, still considered tar. Why? For this very reason. Because he uh, authorize them merely to wash the key, not more than that. So there's no concern about entry. Okay, so that's by Taharis. And we can draw an analogy. Hash the Taharis of Taharis. This applies even to Taharis, where there's a uh, concern in our about Tuma. And we say that it's safe and sound. Yai Nesam Abay goes without saying. It goes without saying that in a similar situation pertaining to Yai Nesach issue, which is merely mid the concern that the guy may have touched, it's on the Rabbanan. Certainly, we apply this reasoning. I gave her the key, but did not authorize her to enter, and therefore we assume she did not enter. That the standards regarding Taharis is higher than Yain The bar is higher, because that's the rice, and this million the Rabbanan. And yeah, actually, yeah, as we have learned, Chatzar, Shacholka Sipas. We have a story about a Chatzar, right? An outdoor, you know, like a yard. Jointly owned by uh, uh, an upstanding Israel and a neighbor who was uh, less than upstanding, you know, Israel and Amorit. He was not careful with the uh, Taharis, etc. And they divided the uh, the chutzr down the middle, but Masipas was a little, you know, a little lattice, a little, you know, divider. Now the the uh, the uh, chaver, the uh, upstanding Israel, had some uh, Taharis, has some fruit, some wheat on his side. Amorav Taharis of Tmeis. He has to consider them to be Tommy because uh, the Amorites uh, may have uh, walked over the uh, barrier and touched the, uh, tampered with the stuff, made a Tommy. But, if his neighbor happened to be a guy, now there's a concern of Yain Nesach. Shall we be concerned that the guy may have jumped over the thing and touched the uh, kosher wine on the other side? Hey, no, it's Yain Nesach. There's no concern about Yain Nesach. So clearly, the standards. A higher when it comes to Taharis and Yainas, which uh, is in line with our previous analogy. Okay, but in any case, let's just uh, shift over to this case and analyze it. So we have this uh, joint courtyard, going to Rav. There's a concern that the Amorites may have reached over and touched the Taharis. Rabbi Yechon disagrees. He says the Amorites certainly stayed on his side of the, uh, the court. Rabbi Yechon Omar, after Taharis of Taharis, Taharis on the other side are considered Tahar, he wouldn't dare touch. Anything on the other side of the barrier. Mesve comes a kasha. On Rabu says, there's a concern about the Amorit tampering. Stuff on the other side. The Brisa speaks about Hapnimia shall chaver, Vachitsen shall Amorit. So we have two uh, properties, two chatseris, two courtyards. The inner one belongs to the chaver, who keeps to the higher standards of, uh, of Taharis. And the chatsen, the outer one, which is open to the street, Belongs to the Amorites. So the Chavar has to walk through the Amorites to get to the street, but not the opposite, right? I say Chavar. So the fellow in the interior uh, courtyard is safe and sound in terms of his material. Nobody's going in there. I say Chavar Shateach Sham Peres. You can leave out his, uh, his Peres to dry. Maniach Sham Kain. Leave his uh, utensils. Vafo Bishyodai. Shalom Arutz Magas Sham. Even though technically the Amorites can reach in and touch, he wouldn't dare touch. 
That's a kasha l'rav who says that we don't trust the Amoritz. I'm the l'rav, rav will answer, shani hasam, shenitz v'salv k'ganav. You know why? In this case, the Amoritz wouldn't dare because if he does, he'll be caught like a ganav, be accused of stealing. What are you doing sticking your hand in the other fellows? But when it's a level playing field, it's just a single area split down the middle, you know what? He may have, uh, you know, leaned over and uh, he's not concerned about being accused of trespassing or stealing. To Hashemai comes another Brisa. This time it's going to be a Kasha or Yechanan who says the items are safe and sound. This time you have two rooftops side by side. The Chavar's rooftop is actually a level higher next to the uh, Amaretz's rooftop which is a bit lower. So can the Chavar use his rooftop safely? Yeah, I say Chavar Sheteach Sham Peres, Meach Sham Kelem, Believe this Peres is Kelem. Oh, provided, Bavad, that it's out of the Amaretz's reach. Bavad Shalai Tehiyo Dei Shalam Aretz Magas Hashem. Provided the Amaretz can't reach up and touch. Otherwise, there's a concern of tampering. Kash, it's a Kash, Lord Biyechon, who says, we're safe. Amach Lord Biyechon, ah, it's different. Shani Hasam, you know why it's different? When it's run, one rooftop near the other, Dish Lish Tamuti, Dish Lish Tamuti, the Amaretz can cover for himself and excuse himself and say, look, I, uh, I had to lean over to uh, sort of survey my property. Maybe I will say, I'm sorry, I'm matzra, I was surveying, uh, you know, I'd like to have, have some construction plans and, uh, and, 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 you know. So I was measuring the area and that's why he ended up, uh, he ended up halfway in the other fellow's roof. But typically, if there's no such uh, alibi, there's no concern. Tashmai comes another. Kasha on, Rab, on Rav. And Rav says, there is a concern about tampering and, and overreach. This time you have two rooftops, but they're side by side on the same level. One belongs to the Chavar, one the Amaretz. Oyser Chavar, so the Chavar is safe and secure in his property. He can leave his payroids, even though technically the Amaretz can reach over and touch. That's a Kashi Rav who says it's a concern. I'm like, Rav, I will say you're right. This Bryce disagrees with me, but Lav Ika Rav Shem Gamliel, the Kai Kavasi, recall in the previous Bryce, there was Rav Shem Gamliel who said that, um, yeah, the Amaretz's presence next door poses a concern. So I'm going like that, Chita, not the Amri. I hold, Rav Shem Gamliel, that the Amaretz next door poses concern. Okay, so we had a daf, many, many stories. The underlying principle would be that if the, if the guy is, has no business being or touching the wine, or being in close proximity to the wine, then he's deterred from doing so, he's concerned about uh, risking his uh, safety and well-being, and wouldn't touch the wine. We have cases where robbers were involved, so if it's uh, most likely a yid, or there's uh, all kinds of uncertainties, then we would mate the wine as well. And we had an interesting point that handing of the key does not denote authorization of access, in which case the, uh, the content inside, whether it's wine or tahara, is considered safe. An interesting machlek is regarding an unreliable next-door neighbor. At what point does he pose a concern? We have a machlek is Rav, who's more concerned than Rabbi Echen, who says, well, typically, a fellow stays to his side of the... Uh, of the um, of the border. All the best to you and that's Lochar Rabba.